myths around Augusta National. Known for its unparalleled beauty, perfection, and high standards, Augusta National is heaven for elite golfers. And today, we're going to dive in and explore the myths that surround this prestigious club. Stay tuned and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Number 10. We will begin with the most bizarre event that took place at Augusta National. It was the year 1983, the month of October, when the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, visited Augusta. During this excursion, he decided to play around with his cabinet and the Republican donors. This was meant to be leisure time for him, but things took a turn for the worse. Two members of his entourage took off to do some shopping at the pro shop. This small detour turned into a hostage situation when 45-year-old Charles Harris took them hostage and demanded an audience with the president. The president spoke to Harris on a phone call, but nothing came out of it. The president was escorted out in emergency. Soon after this, the hostage situation was resolved as Harris surrendered to the police. Number 9. Augusta National is the home of the Masters, one of the most elite golfing majors. The level of competition at the Masters is so top-notch that the myth is it's nearly impossible for the rookies to win. But why is it so? To know about it, keep watching. The equation is pretty simple. The more times you compete in the Masters, the better your chances will be of making a late afternoon appearance in Butler Cabin. Yeah, that's where the champions go. But to win at the Masters isn't a piece of cake. Firstly, Augusta National's greens are deceptive. They take some serious learning. And, and the cherry on top, this is a tournament that doesn't allow the players to use green reading books. But don't be scared if you're a rookie who's planning to take on the Masters because three golfers have won the Masters on their first trip down the Magnolia Lane. Horton Smith in the inaugural 1934 event, Gene Sarazen in 1935, and Fuzzy Zoller in 1979. Some other rookies have also come close to winning it, so it's only a matter of time before someone breaks the ice. Number 8. Augusta National is a club that strives for perfection and the sheer hard work that's done on the course can be seen before every Masters tournament. The club is known for its abundance of spring colors and none is as synonymous with the tournament as its azaleas which beautify the landscape with their bright pink, red, and purple colors. So the myth is that the club lays ice on the azalea beds to help them bloom for the tournament in the second week of April. After all, what would the masters look like without the ravaging colors that the azaleas provide? Number 7. The Lush Green Grass the vibrant azalea beds and the landscape make Augusta National one of a kind. Over the years, to facilitate the patrons, the club has left no stone unturned. They've bought properties all around the club so they can offer free master's parking to them. The club has been generous in its offerings and has met little resistance. But they often say that money can't buy you everything. And rightly so, because there's this three-bedroom home belonging to Herman and Elizabeth Thacker that sits smack in the middle of the parking. Despite repeated attempts from the club to purchase it, the answer has always remained a polite but firm no. It has been a long wait, but there is light at the end of the tunnel, so maybe one day this house would also become part of this prestigious club. Number 6. Given how orderly everything is at Augusta National, finding something out of the ordinary is a rarity. Yet, arborists who roam the course will notice a one-of-a-kind lone palm tree that is camouflaged by other surrounding trees. In recent years, the club has cut the trees and now the palm tree is a highly visible sight on hole 4. Although a misfit, for now this palm tree is a permanent member of this institution. Number 5. For a club as prestigious and selective as Augusta National, this myth will shock you. This club is as elite as it can get. It only has a handful of members and you cannot join it unless you are invited by another esteemed Augusta member. But during World War II, Things took a paradigm shift. Many members and employees of the club joined the war effort. With the club not financially secure at the time, co-founder Bobby Jones bought 200 cattle, figuring that not only would their grazing keep the grounds in acceptable condition, but they would later be sold. Apparently, it was a solid idea, but things didn't turn out as planned. As the club was closed, the workers stopped the annual planting of winter grass, due to which the Bermuda grass on the grounds became dormant hence it provided little in way of food and nourishment for the cattle. This led to another problem. The cow started eating the very precious azaleas, which was completely unacceptable, so this had to be called off eventually. Number 4. 
The club has a decorated past. From the Second World War to President Reagan's visit, it has witnessed one of the richest phases of American history. But that's not all. Because over the years, the club has set its traditions and customs. The club has been hosting the Masters since 1934, and there has been this unique practice where every year's Masters champion donates a club to Augusta National for its champion's collection. This is a great tradition, but one guy did not follow it. In 1992, Masters champion Fred Couples did not donate any club to the course. The reason is still unknown. Number 3. Augusta National has its own ways and customs amongst which is the green jacket tradition. To know more about this, stay tuned. The green jacket is an enduring icon of a champion and the civility, manners, and tradition. There's no greater symbol of the Masters and the Augusta National Golf Club than the green jacket. The history surrounding it goes back to Bobby Jones, Clifford Roberts, and the founding members of the club. Since their time, each year after the tournament, the previous champion participates in the jacket ceremony for the new Masters champion. It is rumored that the jacket costs around $250, but its significance is far greater. In fact, in 2013, the two-time Masters champion, Horton Smith, sold his green jacket for a mind-boggling sum of $680,000. Number 2. The Masters has a glorious legacy, but how did it come into existence? Well, the answer will rattle you. The Masters wasn't even considered a major until the middle of the 20th century, and it was born out of the US Open rejection. Yeah, surprising, but true. The sequence of events that took place in 1934 was pretty interesting. The owners of the Augusta National wanted to introduce the course to the world by hosting the 1934 US Open, but the USGA was least interested. Their president, Herbert Jacquez, wrote, Whereas we are all favorably inclined to this move in the near future, we do not think it's practical to attempt in 1934. The owners of the Augusta National did not take this lightly. In fact, they inaugurated their own event, the Augusta National Invitational, which soon came to be known as the Masters. And number one, the final story related to the Augusta National is a tragedy. In 1976, Clifford Robert, the co-founder and chairman of the club, was found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound on the course. Robert's deteriorating health had forced him to stay in bed and miss that year's Masters. Augusta Chronicle described him as the indestructible man, the forceful personality whose iron will would normally carry him through any crisis, physical or otherwise. Guys, I hope you loved today's video. We'll be back with more amazing content within no time. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, it's a goodbye.